Hi guys, I was going to talk about uh, suppressors, uh, hearing protection, and uh, why you need both, and why actually hearing protection only isn't really that effect effective at protecting your hearing when shooting. So let's start viewing some web pages. There we go. So this is. Uh, Let's see here, what page is this? National Institute on Deafness and Other Communication Disorders from the US Department of Health and Human Services. So what is noise inducing hearing loss? Uh, let's read this part. Uh, noise induced hearing loss can be immediate or it can take a long time to be noticeable. So usually hearing loss is cumulative. Uh, it creeps up on you. Uh, yeah. The point here is you can prevent it. <coughs> Basically anyone is susceptible to this. So what causes this? So noise induced hearing loss can be caused by a one time exposure. Actually one time can be enough uh, to an intense impulse sound such, an in, such as an explosion. Yeah. Uh, and. Uh, so, so sound is measured in, measured in decibels. <coughs> so what is decibels? Uh, normal con conversation is 60 to 70. Movie theater can be up to 104. Motorcycles, uh, at least those who <laughs> really hate their hearing, can get up to 110 decibels. Sporting events, concerts can go up to even 110. And then it's really loud. And you're going to have pain in your ears. Sirens can go up, go up to 129. Fireworks show or explosions or firearms basically can go up, up to 160. Actually, they can go up much more above 160. We'll get to that later. So, um, yeah, uh, shooters are in this category. So uh, I'll put a link to this page uh, in the description so you can read up about this, how it damages your hearing. Uh, my hearing damage is tinnitus. And what's happened is in this cochlea, or however you pronounce that, you have fine strands of hair that tickles the auditory nerve. And those are bent, so they tickle the nerve constantly. So I have uh, constant noise in my head all the time. And this, uh, the, the doctor explained to me that uh, the sudden impulse sound did this to me. So yeah, that's not a fun thing to have. Uh, when I've been to, you can't really cure tinnitus. For hearing loss, you can have hearing aids, but tonight is your fact, <laughs> at least so far. Uh, so I went to these uh, meetings for people with tinnitus, and I'm, f compared to many of the people I met, uh, I'm, I'm fairly good at it. Uh, I have it fairly good. Some people can't even keep a work. They have this ear splitting so sound 24 seven in their head. And there's a high percentage of those people who commit suicide because of it. So this is serious business, people. Yeah, let's see here. <coughs> so uh, this is a very popular brand of hearing protection, the Sordin brand, and this is their one of their top of the line models. So the way you rate hearing protection is by, uh, what was that? I don't remember what the abbreviation stands for. <laughs> Noise rating something. And this is 19. So uh, <coughs> you, you would believe that the 19 is that it reduces uh, it 19 decibels, but it's not really that simple. So uh, this is uh, an explanation of that. So the NRR, NRR rating. Uh, yeah, when hearing protection is worn, your level of exposure to noise is based on the NRR rating of the protection device being used. Keep in mind, however, that while NRR is measured in decibels, the hearing protector being used does not reduce the surrounding decibel level by the exact number of decibels associated with that protector's NRR. For example, if you are on a rock concert where the level of noise, noise exposure is 100 decibels and you're wearing earplugs with an NRR or 33 decibels, your level of exposure will not be reduced by 67 decibels uh, to 67 decibels. Instead, to determine the actual amount of decibel deduction applied, <coughs> you take the NRR number in decibel, subtract 7, and then divide by 2. So I did this for Sordins, and uh, 
it reduces the decibel level by six. So what does this mean? And also, uh, if you use earplugs and ear, uh, earmuffs, that doesn't, you cannot just add the NRR numbers. So uh, I'll put a link to this page as well in the description. So what does this mean? So here we have a table of uh, firearms and, and uh, the amount of sound that they make. So yeah, uh, at the top we have a regular bolt action rifle firing uh, 308 and that goes up to 167 decibels. Over 140 decibel uh, and you'll get instant pain in your ears if you listen to it. And if your hearing protection only low lowers the level 6 decibels from the surrounding sound, you're not really doing that much, are you? So just regular hearing protections, you're still going to get uh, a cumulative uptick of hearing damage, even if it's not immediate, which it can be in uh, uh, certain cases. I have friends who, who, who suffered from that. Uh, an example is a, a shooting friend of mine who just leaving the leaving the range he got sudden tinnitus and now he's just in a dark room and uh, uh, he lost his job he can't uh, spend time with his family anymore it's uh, horrible <coughs> so anyway so an unsuppressed 308 is 167 decibels and a suppressed 308 according to this chart is 133 decibels but if you look at like a team at Military Arms Channel when it does suppressor tests with this fancy equipment, it's very rare that suppressors go down, make the sound go down to 133 decibels. Usually it's around 140. Uh, so if you have a really good suppressor, you'll get it to like 133 decibels. And that depends on the volume of the suppressor and stuff like that. Uh, sometimes hunting suppressors have a fairly low volume and are made of really uh, like aluminium and stuff so they won't uh, lower the decibel level that much so what I'm trying to say is uh, use if you're gonna use uh, those tiny earmuffs like a sword in Peru that only has a uh, rating of 19 then you're gonna need earplugs as well and the suppressor if you use the really big ones, there are big ones, the ones I use, though ha those have an NRR rating of uh, 33, I believe, or 35, something like that, I don't remember. Uh, then you're better off, and I also always use suppressors. And you gotta remember that uh, the distance to the sound is very important. So you as a shooter uh, are much more affected than people surrounding you, because the sound will dissipate uh, the further away very fast. <coughs> so yeah, the most important part is that you as a shooter need a suppressor on your rifle. Even if not the rest of the range uses suppressors, if you use it, it's very good. So uh, suppressors are basically a very necessary safety precaution. And it's basically needed to be able to avoid, in worst case scenario, instant hearing damage. Uh, it should, if I were to be dictator over gun laws, <laughs> a mandatory thing to have on all firearms, basically. Unfortunately, that's not the way. Our politicians are watching uh, Hollywood action movies too much, so it's uh, usually, in most countries, a very regulated item. Not that regulated in Scandinavia, where I live, but still. So I hope this gave you some insight into why you really do need suppressors and the hearing protection. You can't just pick and choose. And, and even if you fire suppressed, if you look at this table here, it's still loud. Even if you have, if you're firing subsonics, it's gonna go down a bit, but still the mechanism close to your ear is gonna be quite loud as well, depending on rifle. If you're firing like a bolt action rifle or a bolt action 22 with a suppressor and subsonics, then whatever, it doesn't sound. But still, I always use hearing protection and suppressors. Okay, I hope I got the point across. I put all the links in the description. And yeah, keep safe and uh, don't get tinnitus like me. Have a nice day.